Shovel warm, shovel warm. Oh, it's one second while I pull this precept up. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, um, I wanted to go into a lesson. You know, um, I did a previous one, uh, maybe a couple of days ago, uh, dealing with uh, the um, the uh, uh, the exile of the Northern Kingdom. All right, history and prophecy. You know how they uh, were taken out of the land. All right, and um, through captivity ended up here, you know, in the Americas. All right, so today, Lord willing, I'll go into, you know, the Babylonian Empire, the Southern Ki and the Southern Kingdom, you know, and, and what happened. All right, so basically, and I have a couple of precepts in here, all right, to tie uh, to tie into it. All right, but after you had the the um, the fall, all right, of the um, of the Assyrian Empire, all right, which was the empire that had, you know, deported the Northern Kingdom out of their land. Okay. After the Assyrians fell, of course, they fell to somebody. You know, as a matter of fact, let's actually start with this precept here. All right, in the book of Daniel, the fourth chapter and the 17th verse. All right, it says, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. So when you look at the uh, the statue, the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, all right, it it uh, uh um or even the, the the beast that Daniel saw, okay, in uh, Daniel the seventh chapter, it goes into the different empires that were to rule. So it's not by coincidence that when the um when the Assyrian Empire fell, the Babylonians, all right, or the Babylonian Empire, you know, sort of became like the next main world superpower. That wasn't by coincidence. You know, now Egypt, all right, they, they, they also warred with Egypt because Egypt was also trying to get up in there. But according to the way the Lord has set it up, Egypt had already had their time. All right. So you had the fall, all right, of the Assyrian Empire, all right, which it fell by uh, the hands, all right, of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's father, all right, uh, Nabopolassar and uh, Syaxeres, all right, the, the uh, king of the Medes at the time. All right. Now, around 605, because the, what, what happened was, when they uh, started taking down, all right, these um, these strongholds of the Assyrians, all right, they took down their, their their capital cities and all of that. They took down Nineveh. They took down Haran. The Assyrian uh, kings, all right, like they would they would be running, you know, to different safe houses, different strongholds. You know, if this one gets taken over, of course they evacuate them. So they ended up, um, you know, in Carchemish, all right, and they ended up calling for help from you know the Egyptians, and that's where we're about to read here. All right. During the fall of the Assyrian Empire, their last battle, all right, was uh, in Carchemish. All right, and it was between the uh, Medo Babylonians, all right, or the Medo -ba Babylonian army against the, uh, I guess you could call it a Syrio Egyptian army. All right. So now we're gonna go to the book of um, Second Chronicles. All right, uh, chapter thirty-five, verse twenty, and it says here. Actually, uh, yeah, it says. After this, after all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, all right, Nico, king of Egypt, now this Nico, all right, Pharaoh Nico, all right, it says, um, king of Egypt came up to fight against Carchemish, all right, uh, by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. So that why was why did Nico have to come up to, to fight, all right, it says, um, to fight against Carchemish, because who was in Carchemish? The Babylonians and the Medes. And they were they were basically wiping out the Assyrians, so the uh, Egyptians came up there. Pharaoh Nico he came up there in order to assist the uh, um, to assist the uh, uh, the Assyrians, all right, and take out the Babylonians and the um, uh, the Medes. Okay, that's why he was going up to Carchemish. But understand that Carchemish being up north, okay, Egypt being down south, he had to travel through where the Holy Land. He had to uh, travel through where we were at. And we had jurisdiction over that place. Now, the king at the time was Josiah. All right. And as we're reading here, this eventually led to his death. All right. Because it says here, and Josiah went out against him. But so when he when he came, you know, trying to come through our land to go up north to Carchemish. All right. Josiah went, went against him like because he was going to come through our land. And it says, 
verse 21, but he sent ambassadors to him saying, what have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? So uh, I'm not here for you, right? It says, I, can't, I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war, all right? And that was what? The, the uh, Medo-Babylonians, all right? Medo-Babylonian army, however you want to call it, because they were teamed up together. So it says, um, for the most I, or for God commanded me to make haste, uh, forbear thee from meddling with God who is with me, uh, that he destroy thee not. And he's talking about his gods, because, the, the, you know what I'm saying, the most I, well, even in a sense, you know, the most I does put the spirit on certain people to fulfill certain things, you know, but it doesn't mean that, you know, the most high, like uh, an example is when the Lord calls Cyrus his anointed. All right. It doesn't mean that Cyrus is, you know, an Israelite, you know, or, or you know, the Lord's chosen or anything like that. But he was anointed, selected to uh, perform a certain task. All right. So in this case, Nico had to go up there and war with them. Um. Verse 22, nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with ne uh, with him and hearken not unto the words of Nico from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. So he, he, he basically disguised himself so he could, he could still go to war all right, with Pharaoh Nico. And the Lord put the spirit on him to do that because it was going to lead to, to this. Verse 23, and the archers shot at King Josiah and the king said to his servants, have me away, for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot and put him in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. All And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. So that's when jo the king Josiah, uh, Josiah died. All right. Verse 25, And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing... Uh, men and singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day and made them an ordinance in Israel and behold they are written in the lamentations so Jeremiah being the uh, the main prophet or one of the main prophets at this time he kept he was prophesying to uh, uh, these different kings all right especially even the one when you read in the book of Jeremiah it'll tell you even the um the king that was set up all right after uh, Josiah you know and the king that was after him Jeremiah kept prophesying unto them, even unto the last king of Judah, Zedekiah, that, hey, the Babylonians are coming. All right. These Babylonians are coming up. The Lord is raising up these Babylonians and they're coming. They're coming for this place. All right. But when they come, uh, submit to them. Don't try to fight them or any of that or else you're going to end up in the worst case. And as we as we're going to find out, they didn't listen. All right. So so we just read. So the, the so the uh, Medes and the Babylonians are fighting against the, uh, um, you know, the the remnants of the Assyrian Empire in Carchemish. Pharaoh Nico comes up here. He's trying to get permission to go up there, trying to, through our land. Josiah comes and fights against him. He ends up defeating Josiah, so he goes up there. But when he goes after all those efforts, he loses. And the book of Nezah kicks his ass. All right, he loses, and we're going to read about that here. Um, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 46, verse 1. It says the word of the Lord came, uh, which came to Jeremiah, the prophet against the Gentiles, against Egypt, against the army of Pharaoh, Necho, king of Egypt, as we just read. All right. Which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish. See, so he made it to the he made it to Carchemish to go fight. It says um, which Nebuchadnezzar. All right. Well, here it says uh, Nebuchadnezzar, which, you know, sometimes the scriptures spell it like that. Uh, king of Babylon smote in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. All right. So basically when uh, Pharaoh finally made it up there, he still lost in the book of Nezah. All right. Um, because what, what after uh, Nabal Palas and the book of Nezah's father and Syaxeres had taken down strongholds, Nebuchadnezzar being the crown prince, was sort of like come, sort of coming up into power. Dick, you know, and the he takes so.
try to set this here. So, like, I think the phone uh, overheated a bit, you know, so. Um, that's why it started freezing, so on and so forth. But, uh, Lord, good now, you know, so. Um, you know, we can pick up. I'm going to continue where I left off. All right, but, um. Continuing on, right? So as I was saying, you know the uh, uh, um, the reason, all right, that the Lord had it to where these uh, Egyptians went and lost against uh, Nebuchadnezzar was so that so that uh, uh, those that that order, you know, of the empires, the different empires ruling, all right, could be you know fulfilled, you know, as it was as is as it was supposed to be. Okay, so keep going. Um, Jeremiah forty six, verse uh, verse six. It says, "Let not the swift." flee away nor the mighty man escape they shall stumble and fall toward the north by the river euphrates who who is this that cometh up as a flood whose waters are moved as the rivers egypt riseth up like a flood and his waters are moved like the rivers and he saith i will go up and will cover the earth i will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof because well ultimately what was going to happen if egypt had gone up there you know, and they had one, they would become the, the, the next uh, uh, superpower at the time, the next major empire again, right? But it says here, um, it shall alone. But it says here, uh, where we at? Verse 9, come up, ye horses, and rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans the ha uh, that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. For this, um, for this, I notice how uh, uh, in in Ezekiel thirty eight it talks about the uh, um, the uh, uh, Libyans as well. All right, if I'm not mistaken, that that are gonna uh, some of the African countries that are gonna come with Russia, you know, or Russia is gonna be a guard onto them, you know, uh, to to come to war. All right, it says, yeah, Ezekiel thirty eight and five, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all um, all of them with shield and helmet, you know. But anyway, let's keep going, dealing with the historical aspect of this. All right, it says, um, verse 10, Jeremiah 46 and 10, For this is the day of the Lord, power of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. See? And the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood. Um, it says, For the Lord of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. And, 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 in, in prophecy, what's going to happen? The Lord is going to make this place, America, a sacrifice, which is modern-day Egypt. And is also considered, what, the north country as well. Okay? Um, it says, verse 11, Go up into Gilead and take balm, O virgin, O, o virgin, the daughter of Egypt. All right? In vain shalt thou use many medicines, for thou shalt not be cured. And then that, that also uh, brings up what? I think it's Jeremiah 51 and, and 8 and 9. All right, going into uh, take balm for her. Okay, but she will not be healed. Okay, but um, it says, um, verse 12, The nations have heard of thy shame, and thy cry hath filled the land. For the mighty man has stumbled against the mighty, and they are fallen both together. Verse 13, The word that the Lord spake to Jeremiah the prophet, how Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon should come and smite the land of Egypt. All right, so that's what we just read. So, they, they they lost where they lost uh in Carchemish. Egypt went up against Nebuchadnezzar, you know, and they lost in Carchemish, and that's when Nebuchadnezzar came down. Okay, Nebuchadnezzar now has uh he came, you know, after he had taken that territory, he started expanding. Okay, now as Nebuchadnezzar was was expanding, of course he came to Israel. Now, when the Babylonians first came, you know, to Jerusalem. There were a couple of instances where they deported, you know, like they, they took the, um, the uh, like, you know, those that they could use, you know, craftsmen, royalty, you know, uh, uh, anybody that they could utilize in their kingdom, they, they, they took them with them, you know. And there was a couple of times they did that, you know, before coming to lay siege to Jerusalem and burning and destroying the walls and burning the temple and so on and so forth. So if you notice, Daniel was a part of the captives that was taken. All right. Before the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, Ezekiel was also a part of the captives that was taken. OK, and we're going to read about that. All right. So now let's go to the book of Second Chronicles. 
All right, verse um, oh, chapter 36. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 1. It says, then the people, all right, going into after the death of, um, of Josiah, okay, as a matter of fact, let me um, go back to, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump up to Second Chronicles 35 and 25, because it's going into, um, like we read about Josiah going up against Pharaoh and he got, he got killed, he got put to death, all right, and it continues into what happened after that. It says, so... I just read in in, uh, in Jeremiah 46 as to what's going on up north in Carchemish, how the Egyptians, again, they ass handed to them. But but down in Israel, what's going on is, uh, um, you know, uh, what we're about to read. So because they're mourning. Right. So Second Chronicles 35 and 25. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah and all the singing men and singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations uh, to this day and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the Lamentations. All right. And uh, Salakia, I'm, I'm going to just move this a bit, you know, just so that the uh, sun doesn't beam on it too much. All right. Just bear with me. All right. Okay, so it says, um, uh, verse 26, Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness according to that which is written in the law of the Lord and his deeds first and last behold they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah second uh, chronicles chapter 36 verse 1 then the people of the land took Jehoahaz the son of Josiah and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem so Nico comes goes to war kills Josiah goes up to war in Carchemish is getting his ass beat uh Jerusalem, Jake is mourning for Josiah and they set up his son, Jehoahaz, all right, king uh, after him, okay? And then it says here, um, 2 Chronicles 36 and 1, and uh, then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of uh, Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead in Jerusalem. Verse 2, Jehoahaz was 20 and 3 years old uh, when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And the king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem and condemned the land in a, um, in a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. All right. So uh, 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 the Egyptians, all right, basically had uh, subjected us because what they, they took over. They, they basically took our king out. All right. So we set up Jehoahaz. He reigns for three months. Egyptians come up in there and they're like, nah, that's a dub. All right. They put him down, took him off. OK. And then they subjected us to tribute. All right. It says, um, verse four, and the king of Egypt made Eliakim, his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem, and turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Nico took Jeho uh, Jehoahaz, his brother, and carried him into Egypt. All right. So Nico goes and, and loses and then comes back on his way back to Egypt. Basically, is like, yo, you guys set up Jehoahaz? Nah, that's a dub. He takes Jehoahaz off. You know, and takes him with him to Egypt, and instead he sets up uh, Jehoahaz's brother Jehoiakim. All right, and and that dude, if I'm not mistaken, that dude is basically like a demon. You know, it says um, verse five, and Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord Yahweh his power. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon, okay? So now the, the Babylonians finally pull up, you know, to, uh, to where we at, and then they can they come there and they see Jeho Jehoiakim, he's the king. Well, they're the, they're the so-called world superpower at the time now, so they come and they bound him as we're reading here, all right? It says, um, verse 7, Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon, and put them in his temple at Babylon. All right, so he comes there, takes takes a, a certain people, all right, along with a, a certain of the vessels back to Babylon. So when you read in Daniel, the fifth chapter, that's how those vessels ended up in Babylon, that uh, Belshazzar, it tells you that Belshazzar and his, his, uh, his hosts, you know, his friends and all of that, his princes, they were drinking, you know, uh, 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 from the, the vessels of the Lord. And what did they do? They were blessing, all right, basically a different God. Okay, 
Um, uh, this is Daniel chapter 5, verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out uh, of the temple. Now, his father Nebuchadnezzar is not literally is his, like his first generation, like, you know, that's my pops, all right? But it means his descendant, like, you know, his he was uh, of his line, okay? It says, um, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein, see? So we're reading in Second Chronicles when Nebuchadnezzar took these vessels, and then Daniel is showing you that that's how they ended up in, in uh, Babylon. And you had Belshazzar's filthy heathen lips utilizing them. All right. So it says, uh, going back to 2 Chronicles chapter 36. All right. Uh, verse 7. Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest, the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abominations which he did and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, uh, of Israel and Judah, and Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his stead. Okay, so the next king after Jehoiakim was uh, Jehoiakim, uh, which I believe he's sometimes known as uh, Kanai or Jeconiah. Okay, it says here, um, let me uh, also get a, uh, another segue precept. To back that up all right because this is what the book see the the babylonians what they did was if they could use you that's why like daniel for example and you know shadrach meshach and abednego the of royalty if they could use you they wouldn't just put you to death you know they would they would teach you in the ways of of babylon and then they would put you in you know in a high court so you can benefit their kingdom all right the book of daniel chapter 1 verse 1 in the third year of the reign of jehoiakim all right, king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, onto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave uh, Jehoiakim, uh, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And we just read that and brought the vessels uh, into the treasure, the treasure house of his God. All right. So, um. Now let's go back, all right, 2 Chronicles chapter 36, continuing on at uh, verse 9. So it says, And Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and, and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And, and mind you, at this time, the northern kingdom is gone, right? So we're dealing with the southern kingdom and their kings, and they're about to be gone, <laughs> all right? Verse 10, And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon. So now he came. So now he came and took uh, Jeconiah or Jehoiakim to Babylon. He he came and took him uh, prisoner to Babylon. All right, because as they were doing evil in the sight, all right, of the Lord, he was he would have it to where you know they would basically pay for that, you know. But sometimes because these kings were set up as puppet or vassal kings under uh, uh, the Babylonian Empire. So if they weren't dealing up to the standard Nebuchadnezzar wanted, or if he felt like they were, you know, rebelling or being shaky, he would take them off and set up another puppet king. So as we're seeing here, he takes off, he takes out Jehoiakim, all right, which uh, Pharaoh Necho set up, and then he, he uh, uh, and then he sets up uh, Jeho Jehoiakim, all right, and then eventually he comes back and takes out Jehoiakim, and then let's see what he who he sets up after that. It says here, verse 10, and when the year was expired, 2 Chronicles 36 and 10, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. And Zedekiah was the last king of Judah before, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, Jerusalem got destroyed. Verse 11, Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign and reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, uh, his power, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. Okay, so 
you have Nebuchadnezzar who is taken. He's come over. We're under him. Every now and then he'll he'll come and he'll take away certain people back to Babylon with him, you know, with certain vessels and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, one of the people that also was taken, okay, was uh, Ezekiel. All right, Ezekiel. Uh, 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 I believe Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, you know, and possibly Ezra. You know, they were uh, contemporaries. They live around the same time. Okay, and that would also make Habakkuk a contemporary with them, because when you read in, uh, um, I believe it's uh, uh, Bell and the Dragon, it tells you how the angel brought Habakkuk to, to bring food to Daniel. So they were living at the same time. All right. So Daniel was one of the captives that was taken to Babylon. Okay. Uh, so was uh, um, um, Ezekiel. All right. And we're about to read that. And Jeremiah obviously was alive at this time because he was prophesying, warning uh, Zedekiah that, hey, the Babylonians are going to come and destroy this place, you know? All right, so you know Jeremiah was there too. Um, so now let's read, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. And when you read the first chapter and the first verse of these books, they usually give you a time period as to what when this is taking place. So it says, um, Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river uh, Kibar, that uh, that the heavens were opened and I saw uh, visions of God. Now, when you look up that area, that's that's in uh, that's that's around, if I'm not mistaken, the land of Shinar in the east. All right, quote unquote Mesopotamia. But that's that was under that that place was under jurisdiction of the Babylonians. So he was also a captive that was taken there. All right. It says verse two in the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity. So remember, Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiakim to Babylon, you know, to be a captive over there. So uh, Ezekiel is, is telling you in the fifth year that, that Jehoiakim was captive in Babylon, all right, that's when this is taking place. It says, the word of the Lord came expressly onto Ezekiel, the priest, all right, the son of uh, Buzi, or Buzai, uh, in, the land, <laughs> uh, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar, uh, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. You see, so he was there as well. So he was one of the captives also that got taken um, to uh, to Babylon. All right. So now you had certain because uh, Ezekiel, when you read the book of Ezekiel, he's he's prophesying against Israel, but he's in the land of ba uh, of Babylon, like he's in the east. All right, Jeremiah is in is in uh, 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 is in Israel still in Jerusalem. All right, you have uh, uh, what's his name, um, Daniel. All right, who's 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 also in Babylon. Okay. And you also had Ezra, who was in Babylon, okay? So when we read in the book of 2nd Ezra, the visions that he gets, that was in Babylon. All right, we're going to read that as well. Now, this is the book of 2nd Chronicles 36, continuing, dealing with Zedekiah. Uh, verse 11, Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign and reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, his power, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. So he didn't take heed to what Jeremiah was telling him. Verse 13, and he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, all right, who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning onto the Lord power of Israel. So um, Zedekiah here was being disobedient. You know, he was subject under Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Jeremiah was telling him, yo, just obey him. But he, he was like, nah. And eventually he, he uh, tried to make a deal with Egypt to rebel against the Babylonians, you know. And let's see how that turned out for him. It says that didn't turn out good for him, but it didn't turn out good for whole, the whole southern kingdom as well. Um, verse 14. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen. And polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord power of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up beat times and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. So an example of the messengers would be Jeremiah. All right. Verse uh, 16. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy, you know? It says, therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, 
which was Nebuchadnezzar, who slew the young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary. And this was in our 586 when Nebuchadnezzar came and besieged Jerusalem, you know, because Zedekiah rebelled. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar came up there. He, he uh, Zedekiah tried to flee, you know, during the siege. Zedekiah tried to flee, all right, but he got caught and his sons as well. And Nebuchadnezzar had Zedekiah see uh, his sons get put to death. And then he put out Zedekiah's eyes and then took him to Babylon. And, and that's where he died. But that's what he gets for being disobedient, for not listening to the Lord. All right, via, uh, through Jeremiah. Um, verse 17, therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion on the young man or maiden uh, old man or him that, that stooped for age he gave them all into his hand and all the vessels of the house of God great and small and the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and his princes all these he brought to Babylon all right and this was the, the actual exile all right of the southern kingdom out of the land into uh into Babylon and they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the uh, the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons uh, until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. You see, so until Cyrus came up in there, you know, we were subject unto the Babylonians. Okay, but notice it says uh, we were subject unto Nebuchadnezzar and his sons. Until the reign, all right, of uh, of uh, the kingdom of Persia, and who was the last person who was in ruling in Babylon before the the, the Persians took over was uh, Belshazzar, okay, because he was of the line of Nebuchadnezzar. It says here, um, verse twenty one, to fulfill the word by to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her sabbaths, for for as long as she lay desolate, she kept sabbath. To fulfill three score and ten years which is uh, supposed to be uh, 70 years all right now when the babylonians came and they destroyed the temple they break their walls jerusalem was looking like a wasteland all right and it was just bad you know but they took majority of the people but they left you know a few uh, remnants of, of israelites there to till the land to keep it um and i believe it was gedaliah all right who was basically made like you know governor or the authority over those remnants of people that were left you know and they asked they asked um they asked uh um jeremiah they asked him you know you, you want to come with us to babylon they didn't even they didn't even force him because the spirit you see how the spirit works right babylonians come and destroy the whole thing and they they look they ask him they're like yo you you want to come with us or whatever you want to do you could do it you know show you how the spirit of the lord works right you know and jeremiah was like nah you know i stay here and so on and so forth all right um and basically that was that was uh, uh the destruction of jerusalem and jerusalem stayed that uh destroyed in that destroyed state until the uh the time of uh the of cyrus when he gave the decree for us to um for us to go back and rebuild you know and so we started we built the temple back you know and then we built the walls all right but now real quick we're going to go to the book of uh, second ezra because i did mention that uh ezra was also in babylon Okay, so now the book of 2nd Ezra is chapter 3. Salaki, give me one second. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 1. All right, and it says here, In the 30th year after the ruin of the city. Okay, so what, what, what city, what ruin of the city? All right, he's talking about Jerusalem. All right, how it got destroyed. So 30 years after that, it says, I was in Babylon, right? Ezra speaking, right? I was in Babylon and lay troubled upon my bed and my thoughts came up over my heart. For I saw the desolation of Sion and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. So he saw the number one, uh, the temple is destroyed. Our land is destroyed. Um, the condition that our people are in is in a destroyed state, you know, but these Babylonians are living good. You know, they're, the, they're ruling over us, you know, and that's why he goes in to say, well, if the world is made for us, why are we under these people? Why are they above? You know, they're not going to praise you, Lord. We're going to praise you. But if you let us get consumed, 
Who's going to praise you when we're gone? You know, you put your name in Israel, not these other nations. All right. It says, uh, <clears throat> when I, for I saw the desolation of Sion and the wealth of them that dwell at Babylon, and my spirit was sore moved so that I began to speak words full of fear to the Most High and said, and then he goes in. All right. Uh, uh, he basically goes in, you know, and then that's when the Lord comes to him via the angel Uriel. All right. And uh, expounds onto, onto Ezra certain things. OK, but that was that was basically the, the sequence. Like first you had the Assyrians who came. They took out the northern kingdom. All right. And so the northern kingdom is out of the land for the most part. You know, and then you have heathens up in the, the that the Samaria and so on. And then Jake, a couple kings after that, you know, they start going off. So the Lord's like, all right, he sends the Buchanan to get their ass out the land, too. You know, until Cyrus comes and gives the decree. And then we're able to return back to the land. And that's when you have prophets like Haggai and Zechariah, you know, who are basically exhorting Jake and getting on the ass like, yo, you know, here it is. You comfortable. You got your own houses, but you leaving the house of the Lord desolate. You don't want to build the house of the Lord, you know, so they got on them, you know, to basically rebuild the temple. And then later on, you had uh, Nehemiah who sought permission, all right, from one of the Persian kings to go and rebuild the walls. You know, and when you read in the book of Nehemiah, that's what you see going on. They, you know, they rebuilding the walls, you know, and then you had Ezra. All right. Who also went to uh, rebuild, really rebuild our people spiritually because they were going off. All right. And then you have that, you know, so Jake at that point, Jake is ruled by, you know, ruled over by like high priests, you know, so on and so forth. You know, you have Malachi up until the Greeks come up in there, you know, up until Alexander comes up in there, you know, and then that goes on from there. You know, so pretty much I'm going to stop it here. You know, like I said, there's a, um, like I said in the last video, you know, when you deal with the history, there's a lot, you know, that you can go into, you know, and, and constantly read about it. But it's oh, it's there. You know, you can just look it up. You know, it's at the, 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 the tips of your fingers. You know, you can look it up and get the information you need. All right. But it's good to know and understand these things. So when you read, all right, uh, certain scriptures, you know, you read in Jeremiah and, and you know, and uh, Isaiah and, you know, all these scriptures, you know what's going on. You have some context of what's going on. You know, if somebody came up to you and asked you, so, so, well, where was Jeremiah? You know, what time period was he in? You know, who was ruling at the time? You know, what was going on at the time? You know, and you all you know is uh, J Jeremiah one and, you know, the Lord said, you know, and, and Jeremiah said, they, you know, you, you got to have some, you know, you got to know these things. All right. So with that, I hope this was edifying unto the elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kodash. Until next time, Shalom.